Hey everyone, Martin Mulder here for On The Tracks of 007. As you know, between 7 and 14 September, uh, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of Live and Let Die, one of my favorite Bond films. As you could already see in David Saritsky's uh, Bond Experience video, uh, we had a blast in New York City. Uh, with location tours, we went to Spyscape, we had all sorts of special visits to like Aston Martin and an analog shift, and we really immersed ourselves in the Bond lifestyle just for a few days. And did it end there? No, it did not. As David explained in his video, after New York, we moved on to New Orleans, Louisiana, where other parts of Live and Let Die were filmed, of course. And uh, being a jazz fan himself, uh, gar uh, director Guy Hamilton convinced Broccoli and Saltzman at the time to take the production to the jazz city number one and home to one of the greatest jazz legends of all time, Louis Armstrong. After landing in New Orleans, uh, I picked up our tour van and I, I drove to the only place where I could safely and, and conveniently park this thing, the Royal New Orleans. Royal Orleans Hotel, please. Ooh, that is a coincidence. Well, anyway. The group stayed at the marvelous Hotel Le Marais in the heart of the French Quarter. And this hotel's courtyard was used in a series of promotional photos in which we see uh, Roger Moore and Jane Seymour pose at the courtyard pool. New Orleans is a crazy city and of course Bourbon Street is the place to go. And as long as you don't do anything foolish, it's a great place to spend some time. Lakefront Airport, obviously where where uh, uh, he went on a on a ride with Mrs. Bell. Yeah. The Live and Let Die location tour continued the uh, the next day, and uh, our first stop was the Art Deco building of Lakefront Airport. And it was here that Roger Moore as Bond gave a surprise flying lesson to Mrs. Bell. And next to the airport is South Shore Harbor Marina where the boat chase ended and, and Sheriff Pepper finally got his hands on 007. The marina has been completely remodeled so you won't find any, uh, anything from those days of the filming uh, there anymore.
And our next stop is Highway 11 in the Irish Bayou. And while the bayous themselves have changed a lot since Katrina, this road can still be recognized as the road where the pursuing police cars overtook the oyster truck. And where the motorboats crossed the road, causing quite a mess. And remember that oyster truck, because we will see him back uh, later on. The most remote location uh, is about a 60 minute ride from the city center and it's the levee where Jerry Camo performed that uh, record breaking motorboat jump. This is Harlem Lane, what are the odds for that name? And it's located at Highway 39 just outside Phoenix. Water levels have dropped, so uh, it doesn't quite look like uh, it did in the film, unfortunately. You tell Miss Pearson to take a flyer. That looked like a boat. Our first day ended with a small walking tour through the old city center, uh, the old French Quarter. And not a lot was filmed in the city, but uh, there is of course that famous uh, uh, corner of Dumain and Charter streets where the, the killing of Hamilton uh, just opposite the Filet of Seoul was filmed. And a jazz funeral, of course. And the before mentioned Louis Armstrong, the legend of jazz, he, he can be found in, uh, in the park that bears his name. Day two of our event uh, saw us cross the lake, uh, Lake Pontchartre. And uh, on the other side, many of the motorboat chase scenes were filmed in and around Slidell. Highway 11 enters Slidell at this precise location. And it is here where the Louisiana State Police blocked Miller's Bridge in the film. This is the old bridge that used to be... Um, it's maybe, maybe 20 meters uh, more yeah, to the right. This is a, a new bridge, obviously. Uh, um, but some of these houses are still out there. And you have this is the Slidell Marina. It uh, used to be a very busy uh, marina and shipyard. Uh, and this is where Bond finally found a way to get rid of Adam. Uh, it was also here that Roger Moore can be seen uh, drinking champagne, posing for photographs with that huge explosion in the back. Moments in the, the, the series of them, the later ones, he's like down like this and spilling the champagne. So, Marco said, like, why is everybody else behind plexiglass and, oh, and sandbags and stuff, and I'm sitting here? Right. You can't see it from here. There is still this water in there. Yeah. Uh -huh. And Roger, when he sat down to watch that explosion, he was sitting on the corner. Of here. 
So in, in this but I, I, where would you get that? I, I mean, I, I, I would have to, I'd like to see where mm -hmm. we are exactly mm -hmm. here. All right. Alan? Another marina they used is at Bayou Bonfuca. Uh, it's now a private marina, but this is where Adam actually stole the boat from Pepper's brother-in-law, Billy Bob. Yes, I'd like to borrow this boat if I may. Everybody on the river would like to borrow this boat. And the next scene was actually filmed just around the corner from the previous one, uh, in front of St. Genevieve Church. There's a small chapel in the back, you can see that in the film, uh, and it's still there, surprisingly. Although nowadays there's a huge church behind it. Saving the best for last, uh, we visited two private estates. Private properties, um, originally owned by the Treadway family, the garden of this house uh, was used to film the scene in which the motorboats crashed through the wedding and the wedding cake. Let him now speak, or else He almost hit my friend on the kayak with his boat. And then the guy all the way down there yells at him. And then he comes back around and he's off. I'm like... I didn't know my, my boat camera was broken down. I took a picture of that number one in boat. And another private property used was the Baldwin Lodge, owned by the Baldwin family at the time. And in the film, the bad guys steer their motorboat straight into the pool. In reality, it's not really possible because the pool is much further away, back, all the way in the back end of the garden. And uh, during the filming, the motorboat was actually placed on a ramp and they launched it into the swimming pool. Movie magic. The final evening of this event, of this live and let die 50th anniversary celebration, uh, saw us board the city of New Orleans uh, for a jazz dinner cruise on the Mississippi River. Something I had never done before, so this was a fantastic opportunity to do that. It was great weather and uh, we had great views, wonderful music, great drinks, so an awesome time. And it was a perfect way to end a fantastic anniversary celebration. Uh, that started for most of, for most of us, uh, as we already said, in New York City, and ended here with this wonderful group in New Orleans. Uh, oh wait, that oyster truck! Can you believe that thing still exists? It's mind-boggling. It was a real-life uh, delivery truck used to deliver oysters in the New Orleans area, and it can be seen in other films as well. Uh, hard times, Charles Bronson, for instance. 
Uh, this truck uh, was also badly damaged uh, during uh, Hurricane Katrina, and apparently it was submerged for three weeks. But somehow it resurfaced, and uh, thanks to John Cork, uh, who, who is advisor for the Ian Fleming Foundation, we found it in New Orleans. It looked like shit, but still, it's a fun thing to see. As you can see from both David's New York video and the one you just watched, uh, it was a wonderful week of live and let die celebrations. And if you would like to join us on, on one of these great trips, please subscribe to our newsletter. The newsletter that we only use to occasionally announce a new trip, a new tour or a new event. Uh, we have some spectacular trips lined up for next year. I'm not going to say anything about it yet. So you please subscribe and uh, don't miss out on great opportunities to hang out with other Bond fans, see celebrities perhaps, and visit all these locations. Fans will become friends. That's what it's all about. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Check out on the tracks of 007.com and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.